Friends, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whenever it is that you are viewing this devotional. My name is Kevin Gregory. I have the privilege of serving as the pastor here at Detroit Lakes United Methodist Church. And this is the second of our weekly Advent devotionals that we're bringing every week during Advent this year. And in the second week of Advent, we've lit the candle of peace, and we're in the second week of our sermon series, Back to the Beginning. So we're taking a look at the beginning of all of the Gospels, of Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, and seeing what they have to tell us about this season that we're in. And taking note of where the Gospels begin and what that means for their story and for our story. And so today and this week, we're taking a look at the Gospel of Matthew. And I'm standing in front of here at Detroit Lakes United Methodist, our memorial board. It's in our fellowship hall. It's got a list of names of people who have given gifts to our church in memory of persons who have died. And I think about sometimes the experience of what someone who might be visiting our church has when they see something like this. And they see a list of names of people that they probably don't recognize. They maybe don't know much about those persons, if anything at all. And I want you to hold on to that experience as we think about the Gospel of Matthew. And I'm just going to read the first couple of verses of the beginning of Matthew chapter 1. And so Matthew begins in this way, and it says, A record of the ancestors of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. And the Gospel of Matthew goes through and lists all of these generations. So then we get to Jesus. And we get to verse 16, and it says, Jacob was the father of Joseph the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who was called the Christ. So there were 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 generations from the exile to Babylon to the Christ. And in that list of names, we've got some people that we probably know pretty well. We've got David, Abraham, Isaac, Solomon, and we've got some people that we probably don't know as well, or if at all. People like Zerubbabel or Yehoniah or Joram. These names that seem kind of strange that we maybe have never heard that show up only kind of in scripture briefly or maybe don't show up at all. And thinking about that experience, thinking about those lists of names, thinking about this list of names, and thinking about our own families even, we read this list of names in the Gospel of Matthew, and we see a list of people who are a lot like us, people who try to do their best to love God and to love their neighbors, and who did a lot of good and who made a lot of mistakes. We see people who were loving and kind and people who also got angry, people who also might have been abusive, people who also did some not great things. And not to say that that necessarily reflects any of the people that are up here on our board, but it is to say that when we look at Jesus, that we have Jesus who is fully human and fully divine, that we have a Jesus who comes to us in the form of a family who is not perfect, and that might be comforting, I think, maybe to us, to know that in Jesus' family, everything is not perfect or clear-cut or clean. And so as we are going throughout this Advent and Christmas season, I invite us just to take note and to take stock. As we're telling stories, as we're visiting with family members, as we're getting together with friends, and as we're trying to welcome and prepare once again, this gift, this child into this well. I invite us to think about our own stories, to think about our own families, to take stock of the good and the bad, and to know ultimately that God comes into this world to redeem families and people like ours, that God comes into this world and works through imperfect people 
who shared their gifts with communities like ours and less, left a lasting impact that people wanted to make note of. And that even in the midst of all of the complexity, that God looks at you and I, and God says that you are mine, and that you are beloved, and that that is our story, no matter what, no matter what other story we might be telling, no matter what it is that might have happened to us, no matter what stories we just don't tell as a family anymore, no matter how much we might want to hide some of the names that God still loves and values each and every one of us. And that peace is not only an end to violence, but also a reckoning with ourselves and who we are and our stories. And so may you experience peace this Advent. Amen.